Hi, and welcome to the Law Center videocast. I am your host, Larry DeMarco, and founder of the Law Center, the home of the Family Court Custody Boot Camp, revolutionizing family court for self-represented litigants. Thanks for joining us today. Please subscribe to the channel, like, share, and comment, and that will enable more people to learn from the Law Center videos. Today, I am excited to introduce to you Lawrence Joss, the founder and director of Family Disappeared. Lawrence, thanks for being a guest on the Law Center video cast, and welcome. Hey, Larry, thanks for taking the time to uh, bring me into your community to, to have a conversation. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what we get to, ch to chat about. Excited to have you. And please share with us, uh, I know Family Disappeared is helping folks who are struggling with parental alienation. Why are you passionate about fighting parental alienation and providing support for alienated parents? Yeah, thanks, thanks for the question. And, and, and just for anyone out there, um, the organization is actually Parental Alienation Anonymous, which is the umbrella organization. And Family Disappeared is the podcast is, that is one of the doors underneath the uh, the organization and, and for me I'm, I'm really passionate about this because i struggle with relationships with my two oldest daughters who i do not have any kind of contact with and uh and i have a younger daughter that i have regular contact with so this is my lived life and my lived experience i'm not talking about something that i read in a book or learned in a class this is actually what i'm going through on a daily basis and then the struggles and the victories and and what it looks like as as a parent grandparent or someone else so even a child that that's sitting in the seat what that looks like is what i'm talking about and sharing from my own direct experience tell us about Parental Alienation Anonymous and your role with the organization. So I'm the director and, and the founder of the organization. And uh, the idea behind the organization is to help as many parents, grandparents, children, and other family members struggling as possible. And I was sitting in this place with not being able to find resources and there was different professionals out there introducing different stuff in different silos. And it didn't necessarily feel like it was a, a healing perspective. It felt like it was two opposite ends of the bell curve where people were just fighting and, and othering other people, but the actual healing and the transformational stuff, there wasn't a lot of folks talking about that. So the organization was started as a, as a holistic healing modality, kind of where we're bringing together people that are struggling, but we're really concentrating on, on interpersonal change in order to go out and, and affect the greater system. Tell us a little bit more about those modalities and what you do for the people that you support. Love to hear more about that. Great, great, great question. So again, like there's multiple doors and we believe that there needs to be multiple doors in the organization to be as inclusive and, and, and as accessible as and as accessible to as many people as possible so the the one door is the is the family disappeared podcast where we're we're having panels of parents grandparents children coming on talking about their lived experience we're exploring you know what that looks like what the challenges are and how and how to move through this and, and live a full and meaningful life and then we also have professionals on that are in the parental alienation estrangement uh community talking about best practices in the court system, talking about, you know, how to take care of yourself from a mental health perspective, talking about uh, other holistic uh, modalities to take care of yourself. And, and that's another door where, where we have foundational trainings. And an example would be um, NVC, which is nonviolent communication, right? Every single conversation we're in, like, are we reactive? Are we responding? Like what's happening? And how do we find the, the useful language to create connection and not disconnection? So that's really important. And we we have other things like um, grace training, which was developed by Roshi Joan Hal Halifax at the Upaya Zen Center in New Mexico. What was we the name of it again? The the what? The, what was the word again? It's called grace training, Okay. which, which uh, is, is just a phenomenal tool that was actually developed for, for nurses and doctors that were in in uh er's and places where there was a high level of just trauma going on and how these folks as they transition from conversation to conversation could ground and find themselves again and we find this as a great useful tool for parents that are upregulated experiencing trauma secondary trauma you know uh, anxiety and it's, it's a great tool and we bring a lot of those tools into the foundational training systems theory um somatic breath work like all different kinds of things and, and and the intention of the foundational training is just to build 
tools, resources, and resilience. And then uh, another door that's a really cool door is the is the Family Hope Project, which is a, a virtual art gallery that is an educational and advocacy platform that uh, parents, grandparents, again, children submit any form of art and they put a description, a title on it. And these pictures are very evocative of the struggles. You know, one father sent me a picture after coming out of court where he was in like a boat. He drew it on a napkin and the boat was taken on water and he was going to drown in the middle of the ocean. He just felt so um, let down by the court system. And that was his expression of art. So we're putting all the stuff together on a on a website and we're engaging all the organizations from all over the world to build this portal for again education and advocacy for social change for systems change for legal change and um yeah those are some of the doors and uh and I, i'd say the the last door which is really important is a is a free 12 step group that we have on on uh, online we have 14 meetings a week it's based on the the Al-Anon family groups, which has been around for over 70 years. So this is a proven framework that helps people that are struggling with relationships. And we concentrate on people that are alienated, estranged, disconnected from their children or other family members. And, and the 12 step program is specifically for those folks. And um, it's a beautiful, loving, supportive community. You don't have to explain to anyone what you're talking about. People are there to just to, to work on themselves. And it is a lot of work. It's not a, it's not an emotional, spiritual bypass. It's a place where we come to look at ourselves and work on ourselves. And from that place, we've seen miraculous stuff happen with people reconnecting with their kids, with people reconnecting with other loved ones in their lives, with kids reconnecting with their parents. And again, it's from a place of healing yourself in order to engage the world. And it's about every single relationship, even though there's a focus on, on families. Let's go a little uh, more into all those different doors. You said, is, is there a portal that people can get a user name and password and be able to log in to access these? How does that work? So our website, which is it's parentalalienationanonymous.com or pa-a.org is usually the easiest way to get in there. And there's a plethora of information on there. There's information about the podcast, the Family Hope Project, the 12-step meetings. There's resources on there if you're a parent trying to educate yourself, a grandparent, even a child trying to educate yourself. We're trying to put as many resources as possible on the website. And that's the best place to, to get general information. And if you're interested in the podcast, it's just family disappeared. You can get it on Spotify, you know, iTunes, YouTube, wherever feels appropriate for you. And uh, we have all the social media channels, also Instagram, you know, Facebook, a private group and an open Facebook page. And it's all, it's all at parental alienation anonymous for all the social media stuff or family disappeared. You mentioned trainings. Are these live, meaning live online with a time certain, or is it some type of on-demand access program? So that, that's that's a great question and, and a little bit more of a complicated answer. So we are a, a 501c3 nonprofit, and for the foundational training, for the foundational trainings, we're just starting to fundraise in order to support that. We ran some of the programs for the first year just to kind of experiment with the community and uh, the nonviolent communication program was just mind altering for, for so many different people. And they're all going to be free, but we are going to fundraise to support the community at, at large. And the trainings will be live. And there will also be recorded trainings of just kind of like an introduction to what is this? What is MVC? What is family systems theory? What is somatic training? And then there'll be, be four to six weeks sessions repeating every four to six, six weeks on, on the different uh, training. So we're going to try and make it as accessible as possible. And some people don't have the resources or the time to be in a live training. So we'll, we'll have to um, create something eventually to to have some kind of trainings that are continuous and online and accessible at any time. The uh, the twelve step program, parents anonymous support groups though they're up and running now, right? Yeah, there's fourteen meetings currently on Zoom 
that are that are available anytime. You just go onto pa-a.org and you sign up and you'll get all you'll get an email with all the links and, and everything like that. And the neat thing about everything that we do is everything is open source. So all our meeting scripts, all the literature, everything is on the website and anyone can actually use this, start meetings. We have a lot of meetings starting all over the world where people are just taking the stuff and, and running with it and building support locally where, where, where they, they physically are. And then other people love coming to the Zoom meetings because we have a worldwide population. And again, it's a healing, loving, spacious community and it's focused on, on recovery. So right now you do have in-person meetings and the the Zoom video conference meetings? So the in-person meetings are individuals in, in whether it's in tar- Ontario, Canada, South Africa that are choosing to start small meetings in place. And some of these meetings we don't even know about, but we're in contact here and there with folks that are letting us know that this is happening. And organically, like AA or Al-Anon, this is how it grows. Like individuals decide they need a meeting in a different place at a different time, and they take the literature and they go and they start a meeting. And that's the beauty of this for free platform and open source platform is this is intended to spread worldwide and anyone to have access and then no barrier of any kind of financial constraints to it. So for someone who wants to start something locally in their county or neighborhood, you actually have some sort of guide or playbook that people could use to start their own group? Yes, 100%. We have a, a suggested outline of what you need to do in order to, to, in order to start a group. And if you, you're struggling or you can't figure it out, you can email us anytime at parentalalienationanonymous at gmail.com. And we have volunteers that man the email and will answer your questions, send you out additional resources, help you start the meetings. And if you follow the formats of the meetings, we can list the meetings on our meeting schedule as well. So, so more people can find you too. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you. Please be more specific about the emotional support services and that holistic approach. I'm particularly interested because there's a wait list on people's um to see a therapist and um you have a, a nonprofit or free approach to giving support. Let us know what you're doing in that space. Yeah, and again an, a, a complex question and what we're doing it does not replace a professional help a therapist a, a psychiatrist. But in our experience, like we're seeing parents that have been struggling with this for whether it's a month, two months or 20 years come in and they're dysregulated. They feel lonely and isolated. And the community is a community where we come together and and we support each other. And the framework of the 12 steps is a framework of introspection in looking at how you relate to different people, how you show up in every different kind of relationship and going through the steps just helps us start to uncover and discover who we are. And then we start to discard the parts of ourselves that might not be quite as useful. And we develop different coping strategies. We come develop different communication strategies and, and i'll say this for me on an individual level in my family of origin when where i was raised i wasn't taught a lot of these different things so i took this into every relationship with my kids with my my partner with my with the people that i did business with with the people at the grocery store and i behaved in this way that i was taught and eventually i had to start to look at myself and, and see where i could evolve as a as a person and, and an individual and and that's really what the 12 step framework is about it's about changing and and it's it's a lot of work it's it's definitely it's a lot of work and uh and it's miraculous like we're seeing so many so many so many cool miracles great and to clarify these this approach is within the 12 step program they're not two different doors to use your language is that is that correct is that do i understand that right so we have these different doors and one door is the 12-step approach right and and there's some different fallacies about 12-step approach and then what it looks like and if it's a you know if it's if it's a religious thing if it's something like that and and it's not for me it's a spiritual experience of just as growing in as an individual but if you choose to come in the 12-step door 
everything that we do is related to the 12 steps and the 12 traditions, which just govern how we relate to each other. And it's very, very structured. It's very, very safe. If you come to a meeting, we follow a guide at every single meeting. We start on time, we end on time. In the context of the meeting, we're just talking about recovery and sharing our experience, strength, and hope. And before the meeting and after the meeting, we get to hang out and have a little bit more like fellowship, hang out, casual time where people can talk about other stuff or or share about a party they went to or whatever, just like a, a little bit of social time, you know? You might know going through a high conflict separation can lead to a world of hurt and and pain other than alienation we could have high conflict with our own children or dealing with our ex because separation is so intensely traumatic and painful is a parental anonymous parental alien anonymous uh, <laughs> as the name would suggest just for alienation or um, are you there for some of the other pain and struggles for um, separated families? Um, you know, the the twelve step meetings we really focus on parents, grandparents, children that are alienated, estranged, or, or, or going through the struggles of that. And some people are in the initial in in the initial court hearings and the initial talking to the attorneys and the initial talking to the therapists and they're not even sure where they are and they're welcome and there's other people that are in the middle of it that are welcome but like if you're dealing with something outside the scope of the relationship the relational issues i don't necessarily know if the meetings will be a great place for you and something like the foundational trainings, you're welcome to come along like every single family, every single member of every single family are struggling with these interpersonal relationships and how to communicate and how to show up. And this is a free service that that is for for everyone to come in, you know, and that's why the different doors are very important because we have different needs at different times. We use different vocabulary depending on those needs and, and where we are in our life. So again, we want to make the 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 information as accessible as possible and you just pick what feels comfortable very good what has been some of your biggest successes besides starting this fantastic organization itself so just to clarify the question you're asking me on an interpersonal level you're asking me on an organizational level i don't know i would like you to answer how it lands <laughs> wow well, what have been some of the the greatest victories um you know, when I first started on this journey and then, you know, me and my ex separated and at that time my oldest daughter was 12 years old and she just stopped talking to me and wouldn't get in a car with me, wouldn't have a meal with me, I didn't know what to do. I was falling apart. The pain was so incredibly excruciating that I had to start to, to do some work on myself that, to be perfectly honest, I don't think I would have come to until I was in my 60s and 70s and closer to mortality and, and, and transitioning or whatever that looks like. But this pain brought me really, really into the center of everything that was happening in my life. And I started to work on myself. So I think for me, on an interpersonal level, like doing the work and showing up this, despite the fear and anxiety, you know what I mean? Like I'm showing up for my own life and uh, kind of looking at those dark places that I don't want to look. And in, in that process, my life has expanded and become this incredibly rich ecosystem where I have people I'm connected with all over the world. I can show up in any situation and really talk about anything and feel comfortable in my own body. You know, I remember when I first came to program, I went to a party and me and my my one friend like stood against the wall, you know, like we we're uncomfortable. We didn't know how to interact. We didn't know what was going on. And we're, you know, I was 36. And uh, today I go to the same environment and I've done the work that I can actually join the conversation and be part of the life force. So that's been incredible. Um, another really great wonderful victory for me is um, I have a lot of young people in my life. I don't have contact with my two oldest daughters, but I have a lot of young people in my life um friends kids i um i started uh being a big brother about six or seven years ago and big brothers and big sisters is a, a you know a, a nationwide nonprofit. and i've had a little brother for six or seven years and he calls me up and tells me he loves me i tell him that i love him and it's like i have this other family 
of choice versus family of origin. It's just like growing and blossoming. And it's, it's really making me expand as, as, as a man and uh, interact in the world in a, in a different way. And, and, and I, I really feel like, like this is a beacon of change. It's a different way to be in the world. And I'll just say the last thing is when I first started working on this, everything was I, 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 and me, me, me. It was very I-centric. It was very about me trying to not die. And as I've worked on myself, it's really turned to like a we and a community and how do I best serve us? How do I best serve folks? And this next chapter of my life is really a service orientated chapter. And some days I do it really well. And some days I don't, you know, and uh, yeah, I think that's kind of my favorite stuff on an interpersonal level. Thank you for sharing those. What are some of your biggest challenges in your work as director of your nonprofit? You know, I think with anyone that takes a, a leadership position, it becomes challenging because a lot of um, folks are projecting and transferring a lot of their experiences onto you, right? Because you become this authority figure, you become this person that knows something more, always perceived to know something more. So a lot of people's interpersonal emotional journeys sometimes get blared directly at me, and it's hard sometimes to... Um, be able to take care of myself and resource myself, you know, so so for me, I heard in program, you know, high boundaries, low expectations, you know, what I mean, so I have really, really high boundaries. And for some people's for some people that might feel rigid. But for me, it's a, it's a sort of survival and protecting my recovery and taking care of myself and resourcing myself. So that 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 overload of information would be one challenge. And then the rate of growth, like we are expanding and growing and there's so many services and so many wonderful things that we're having conversations and creating formats and and um, processes to launch. But just actually having the manpower and the time to move through everything is is a challenge it's, a, it's like a, there's a little bit of a bottleneck because there's so much wonderful energy going on and so many different things going on and and we're still you know we're two and a half year old organization you know we're still you know in one of those little things where we can't quite walk and we're wobbling around a little bit bumping into stuff so that is definitely a an interesting challenge and it's also really beautiful because like birth is like this wonderful exploratory rich environment and creative spaciousness so we're we have that side of it too final words about what you want people to know about your organization and the support you provide um you're not alone you know what i mean like the disease of parental alienation estrangement erasure the, the pathology wants to keep us isolated and separate and it doesn't have to be that way. I can't do this by myself, but we as a community can do it. And 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 I would say participate where it feels comfortable. Stick a toe in, check out the temperature of the water, see if you like it. And if you don't, leave. Maybe you'll come back six months later or a year later and you'll find something that's really um, worthwhile and inspirational. So there is hope. There is a community of people that doesn't need or want anything from you that are just showing up for themselves in order to grow and expand as a human as a human being. And in that environment where no one's trying to take or get anything from anyone, there is a spaciousness of healing. So I, I, I think that's that's what I'd like to share about the organization. Thank you for doing so. You have given me some great links and your website and other information that I place in the description portion of the video, but for people who are listening in the car or on a jog, can you tell us where they can, where we can find more information about you online? So um, again, the, the easiest way to access the website is pa-a.org. The podcast is Family Disappeared, just at Family Disappeared. And the Family Hope Project is the, the advocacy and um, educational platform. And my name, again, is Lauren Strasse. Linktree is probably the easiest place to, to find me and access all the different things that I'm a part of and uh, exploring. And uh, yeah, and thank you so much for having this conversation and inviting me into your community to, to have a little chat. Lars, I, I want to thank you. And I also want to acknowledge you. You mentioned that you want to uh, have additional programming 
and um, you wanted to uh, eventually raise some money and fundraise, but you just mentioned that this has been going on for two and a half years. You've ran several programs. You have a website, and and basically you are doing this all on your own time and your own dime. And I want to acknowledge, I want our viewers to know that, and I want to acknowledge you for giving so much to people in pain and giving them this place where they can go. And thank you again for 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 all your work with your organization. Thank you. Thank you for that acknowledgement. And I just want to say this for people as a thought, like, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this because I don't want to die and the pain is real and it's visceral and it's really challenging. And in doing it from a place of not wanting to die, it also is a, a spacious place where I don't need anything to. So I just wanted to say that. I don't know if that made any sense, but. Made sense to me. Lawrence, Lawrence, let's leave it there. And again, us not only thank you for what you do, but thanks for being a guest on the Law Center video cast. Thanks, Larry. We've been here with Lawrence Joss, and I am your host, Lawrence DeMarco, Larry DeMarco. I'm also Lawrence DeMarco. <laughs> Call me Larry, please. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and comment. Also, click the notification bell next to subscribe to be alerted of new videos. Go to the description portion of this video where you can learn more about our guest, Lawrence Joss, and his nonprofit, Parental Alienation Anonymous. And you can also, in that same spot, learn more about our revolutionary family court custody boot camp, which will forever transform child custody court one self-represented litigant at a time. Thanks for watching. Signing off. Tune in next time. Bye for now.